Hey guys, today I'm going to try and answer a hypothetical question for you. If I was to buy a Trek e-bike, would I buy the Trek rail or would I buy the rail's skinny cousin, the Fuel EXE? And this is the 9.7 model. I'll give you a quick rundown on the bike. It's carbon, it's 29er, it's got some 36s up the front, 150 travel, it's got a float X at the rear, 140 travel, XT uh, derailleur, SLX brakes. But that's not what makes this bike interesting. Um, in fact, some of you may be thinking, Lance, are you sure that's an e-bike? Um, because it doesn't really look like one. And I must admit, if you look on the website, you can buy this bike as a non-e-bike. And you have to look twice to be able to tell the difference. And so how have they done that? Well, first up, there's a 360 watt hour battery in there. And I'm not quite sure how they've done it. I don't know whether they've used a hammer and just smashed the battery down and then shoved it up there. But they managed to make a really compact battery um, that is much, much smaller. And so you can hardly tell that a battery is in there. The other thing, and here comes the motor. It's got a very small motor. It's the TQ HPR 50, uh, which has 50 newton meters. And I struggle on this one. Let's get it right. It's got a harmonic pin ring drive transmission. I've probably screwed that up. I've tried it three times now and I keep getting it wrong. So I'll, um, if not, I'll write it down there somewhere. But anyway, it's basically like a rotary motor. Um, in fact, wouldn't that be really cool? A lot of people hate e-bikes already, but wouldn't it be great if you went riding around the track screaming like an RX-7 up the hill? <laughs> Yeah, no, it doesn't do that. In fact, it's really, really quiet, this bike. So uh, that is one of the things I really liked about this bike. Another thing that I do like about this bike is I like the display on the top tube. Really stealth looking. And again, it's like a, just a really minimalist control on the handlebar. Nothing on the handlebars here. Looks really, really cool. It does have an app. I'm not a good person with app. I do struggle. But I did manage to get the app to work. And I did end up playing. You can play with all the settings, the amount of... Um, power and assist and, and response time and things like that. And that was really cool. Surprisingly enough, my favorite setting was full everything. Uh, full power, full assist, full response. Um, I guess that'll come no surprise to anyone who watches my videos. But it does give you the ability to change those settings for the three different modes, which I think is pretty cool. The app, um, I did look on the website of what the app can do, and supposedly it could do all sorts of interesting things in terms of maps and things. I, I didn't manage to make that work. For some reason it said I, I didn't have that, but I'm not, anyway, it, it, it's, it, it is available, I believe. Um, okay, the other thing, this bike, also it can get a range extender, 160 watt hour range extender. I believe they are a little bit short supply in New Zealand, but I guess that'll eventually uh, change. Um, so, I've got a few questions for this bike. One, can I go out to my normal bike park and do my normal ride? Um, can I do the range? Um, can I keep up? Uh, can I do that? How does this thing handle? How does this thing pedal along when you go over that speed limiter? Um, just generally, what do I think of it? So, I'm gonna do that, and at the very end of the video, I'm gonna tell you if I was to choose one, whether I would choose this bike or whether I would choose the heavier rail. Anyway, um, I'll meet you out there. All right, probably doing things out of out of order for a normal review, but as I say, we're not doing a normal review. We're trying to ride it as if I was doing a Sunday ride, except the guys aren't here. They're all skiing, and I decided not to go this year, which I'm not quite sure why. So we're going to do a bit more of a techie track um, and see how she handles. All right, so this bike is a size large. It's got a 483 reach on it, and I'm 176 centimeters. According to the size charts, this should be perfect for me, and I think it's not bad, but to be honest, I wouldn't mind trying the medium, actually. I think it's around a 450 something reach. Might be, might be better. So maybe just slightly long. It's got, a, it's got a low and a high setting. It's currently in the low, and a 64.8 degree head angle. And uh, not the slackest of bike, but as yet, some of the bikes I've been riding recently, I've come to the conclusion that somewhere between 64 and 65 is probably about ideal for me. So yeah, that feels pretty good. All right, 
know, this should be a good test. Oh, too easy. Bit of slop. Too easy, eh? Happy with that. Okay, I want to do another test. This trail is called Off the Grid. And one thing I'd often do on this trail is I ride it without pedaling at all. Um, I think that's a really good test of your cornering uh, ability, teaches you to pump, teaches you to not break too hard into corners, all that sort of stuff. And I figured it'd be interesting to see how well this thing actually rolls, because so far I've been pretty impressed. It's a full-on uh, 29er and it's got not the most aggressive uh, tyres, which for today's conditions are pretty perfect. I must admit, since I've started e-biking, I've pretty much been running tractor tyres because I've been more concerned about grip in the mud than trying to get the fastest rolling. But certainly, as I say, this rolls pretty well. It'll be interesting to see whether I get it goes faster because it's lighter and more nimble or whether the big fat rig just generates more momentum, I'm not sure. But so far, as I say, it feels really good. It's, so it's certainly a very quick rolling machine. All right, well I guess it's time for a little bit of climbing. And we're in the full power setting, so that's 50 Newton meters. Now power's a funny thing really, in that it's all relative. In fact, I started riding this thing in the lowest two settings for a while. And then when I went to 50 Newton meters, I thought, wow, this is powerful. But of course, after riding in it for a while, you just acclimatise. And I think if e-bikes first came out at 50 Newton meters, we would think that was amazing and you would never think of having more power. But the more you have, I guess the more you want. Saying that, one of my concerns with getting this bike would be, could I keep up with all of the guys riding their bigger bikes? But a lot of them, they're going through a bit of a fitness thing at the moment, are riding in tour, so they're not even riding in the 85 Newton meters anyway, they're riding in a lower setting, so you can certainly get up here no problem at all, and the reality is you could ride it up here if you're really fit with the motor off, so any assistance is better than no assistance, but yeah 50 Newton meters, I'm um, getting up here no issues at all. Now this is uh, the 9.7, so it's not the highest spec model you can get of this, but it's pretty good value for money. It's got a pretty good spec on it. Uh, SLX brakes, uh, XT drivetrain, um, some nice Fox suspension. Let's say it's not the biggest travel bike at 150, 140. Um, I kind of almost say it's more like a trail bike, but uh, than a big downhill sled, but it's certainly coping absolutely fine with all this sort of stuff. And I guess we're talking, between this and a Trek, we're talking about 10 millimeters, aren't we really? So there's not much difference in it at all. Did have a little bit of a play around with suspension. When I first jumped on it, I thought, oh my God, it's terrible. But then I realized the rebound was fully on slow. So managed to fiddle with that and it definitely improved it. So. I guess that's the thing with suspension, it's, oh this looks terrible, it's all good though, no problem. Yeah it's all about setting up the, the bike perfectly, but I think I've got it reasonably good actually, and it definitely pumps along really nicely, we can get some speed up. You can see I'm just literally, these are uphill, but you can literally pump up and down, no problem at all. Oi. Bit of a huck. Ooh. One thing I would say about this bike is that it's super quiet, um, both in terms of motor noise and also in terms of general rattling. A lot of the e-bikes, full fat e-bikes especially, especially Bosch, tend to have that old rattle going on and you kind of get used to it but when you jump back on a bike that is really quiet it is really really nice oh. all right so with a dad's army ride we always finish the day with some laps of Halgood so we better do the same first run down 
Uh, it was put off a little bit because the dork just shook loose. Should we try the big line this time? Lights all right. Going a bit slow. Oh, it pops over there, nice. Probably shouldn't really start on a jumps track. It's nice to get the feel of the bike first, get a bit of confidence on it. Certainly pumps nice. Not that I'm good at whips, but you do feel as you can sort of throw this around a bit, get a bit of style. All right, see if we can pop over the last one. Oh, happy with that. All right, we'll keep going to the battery run instead. I think we've only got, it says, two bars, which is like 20% or something. Three Ks maybe. All right, I'm back and look, the bike's not even dirty. Um, I should point out that I didn't do in the beginning that I did do the Rail 7 review a couple of weeks ago and I'll leave a link in the description and whatnot if you want to check that out. Um, I'd also like to thank Pit Crew once again uh, in the North Shore. They gave me this bike to play with for a few days. Um, they do hire out both bikes, so if you want to do exactly the same experiment as me, you can pick them up, try them out and see which one is correct for you. Okay, so how did I get on riding this thing? Well, I, to be honest, I really, really did enjoy it and had a great time on both days. Uh, this thing feels like you're not riding an e-bike. It just feels like you've suddenly turned into Nino Schurter, the world's uh, greatest XC racer of all time. I was just flying around the forest and I just felt, it felt like I was riding a normal bike. It just felt like, like I was really, really fit. Um, and that was a wonderful feeling. Okay, so which bike should I choose? Well, I thought for a bit of fun we could do a, like a little awards ceremony. So if I could have the first envelope for the best looking e-bike, please. Okay, well, it, as it turns out, I don't have anyone who helps me with these videos. It's just me, a tripod and a camera. So, um, but I do have a little piece of paper because I have a terrible memory. So which one looks the best? Well, that's kind of subjective, but if I want to know if something looks good, I asked my wife. I mean, she has impeccable taste. I mean, what can I say? Um, but she checked this bike out and she really liked the look of this one. Um, I kind of asked her, what is it about this bike? And she said, well, it's just kind of really sleek and, um, and I guess non-e-bike looking. And so she really liked the look of it. I must admit with the display and everything, I've got to agree with her. So it beats the trek for me on looks. So fuel gets the first one. Noise, fuel gets the second one as well. This bike's really quiet, both motors super quiet, it doesn't rattle, uh, yeah, beats the rail hands down on that one. Power, rail, yeah, don't, don't, don't give me that whole power to weight ratio thing. Trust me, if you do a race up a hill, the rail will be sitting up there doing trail side maintenance while this thing's still coming up. Pedaling over the speed limit or pedaling when the motor's off. Uh, this is my big bugbear. Um, you do three pedal strokes here in New Zealand, you're over the 31 kilometer now, the motor cuts out, it feels terrible. Um, if you're in Europe, you do two pedal strokes and you're over 25 kilometers an hour. This thing, the motor completely disengages, so there is no resistance to pedaling it at all when the motor um, is turned off, other than the normal resistance, of course. Um, so this felt really good. In fact, when I was going downhill and the motor must have been cutting out, um, I really didn't notice um, the difference, and so, yeah, big tick to the fuel for that one. Handling. Uh, again, another subjective one. I mean, if you're going down a steep, gnarly, rooty, rocky, uh, off-camber terrain, um, then sometimes having that weight of the rail just plowing through it um, is better. And likewise, if you're doing a massive scary jump, having the weight of the, between your feet stabilizing the bike is also a really great feeling. But if you're talking about cornering, bunny hopping, flicking the bike around, I know I shouldn't at my age, but I really want to learn how to whip. And I was trying to whip this thing around and you know, it definitely, it definitely way more maneuverable than the rail. So handling, I'm actually gonna to give to the fuel as well. Weight, fuel as well. Uh, it's only 19 kgs compared with 24, 25 for the rail. So easily the weight it wins on that one. And so based on that, the overall, oh no, there's one more category. Range. Did I manage to do my normal Woodhill ride on this bike? Well, no, I didn't actually. Uh, I, the first day I did about 25 kilometers and 
Second day, I think I did actually slightly less. And the first day, I think about 80% full power and a little bit, about 20% less power. And on the second day, I used full power the whole thing. Range said I should have got about 30, but it probably isn't allowing for this thing as much. Um, it does say you could do 60 on the low power. And I guess if I'd um, had the range extend 160 watt hours, that would make a huge difference. That would probably be the, I would probably do the whole ride quite comfortably with the range extender. So I guess based on that, um, which one would I choose? Well, I would choose the rail. Uh, no, don't, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Some of you are typing already, and don't, I've heard this one before, and before you type it, I've heard the one saying, full fat e-bikers are lazy. Now, if you can't see the irony of that, you're riding a bike with a motor, calling another bot rider with a bigger motor lazy. If you can't see the irony in that, then there's something a bit wrong with you. Yeah, if you want, go and look up irony, I'll, I'll, I'll wait. Um, so, yeah, it's a bit like if you gave me the choice between a Ford Ranger and a Ford Mustang, which would I choose? And don't give me the whole Ford Commodore, uh, Ford Holden thing. They don't even make Holdens anymore. We're talking about bikes and it's just an analogy. Yeah, you can look up analogy as well if you want. Um, but I would go with a Ranger, just because a Mustang's cool, but a Ranger meets my needs. And it's pretty much the same with a bike. If I had the money, if I was a factory rider, I'd, I'd gladly take both. In fact, I would ride this bike a lot if I had both bikes. Um, if I was going out on my own, doing training, wanted to get fit, wanted the feel of a light bike, I would take this. But if I want to go out with my mates and I don't want range anxiety and I don't want to be left behind, I would take the full fat e-bike. So. Now that's not to say that my decision is correct for everybody. There is definitely people this bike will be better for. If you um, uh, ride with the people who don't have e-bikes, um, and say your son's really getting fit and you don't, want to, you don't want to hold him back, then a little bit of power like this would be great. Also on flat trails where you go over the speed limiter a lot and you, like, and you want to do a lot of pedaling, this bike's going to be better. And for anyone who just likes the feeling or really doesn't like the feeling of the big, heavy, clunky e-bike. Anyway, if you've enjoyed the video um, and you've not got peeved off because of, with, of with my choice, I'd love it if you should subscribe, thumbs up, like, leave me a comment. I don't mind. Call me crazy if you want. If you've got one of these and you think I'm an idiot, just tell me that. I don't mind. Um, let me know what you think. And if not, well, we'll see you on the next one.